guys, KO here. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila, where we are working to inspire positive, radical social evolution. I am so excited today. It is a reunion. I'm bringing my girls back from PodFest 2020, Sarah, Viviana, and Melissa, and myself. And we are all going to be talking about our podcast what we're doing right now, our challenges over the year through 2020, and all the upsides of podcasting. So many of our lessons can be applicable to your podcasting journey if you're about to start a podcast or just life in general. There's lots of great juicy life nuggets within this conversation. It was so great to catch up with these ladies. And I hope soon we are all together again at the next PodFest event, toasting tequila and eating pizza as we do and having a grand old time, changing the world one conversation at a time on the mic. Enjoy this conversation. Ladies, it is so great to connect, and I hope to see you in person soon. Enjoy. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. Today's a great day. I cannot believe it. It has been one year since... Myself and three uh, members of my podcast family were all at PodFest in Orlando last year. We were newbies on the scene to the podcast world. And here we are a year later reconvening. Uh, I think we met it on March 5th last year, so we're a little bit later, but it's St. Patrick's Day. We're toasting. We are going to do a catch up on how life is, how our podcasts are, uh, tips and tricks for anyone trying to get into the podcast game. And I think that we can all conclude on how important the community is and how, you know, in our days and we're like, what am I doing and why am I doing this? And because if you're about to podcast, those will happen. You need your fam. So we are here to emphasize the community around podcasting, which was a total added bonus. I had no idea that was going to be what it is. But without further Further ado, uh, we have Melissa, Viviana, and Sarah. I am gonna let them go first, and then I'll, I'll give you a quick update on TNT. But if you're listening, you you probably already know, or you should. Um, Melissa, do you want to start us off? Sure. Um, I'm Melissa Goodwin from Girl Got a Hike, the podcast, as well as Girl Got a Hike, the hiking uh, club. It, well, more than a club. It's my a guide business. I take women out of the city and into the woods. I live in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, in my last year of podcasting, I have not been nearly as prolific as the three of you, um, but I have had a great time uh, going on hikes with other ladies, walking and talking, um, meeting a lot of really interesting people and trying to get their stories out there as well. Um, yeah, it. that's what's been happening. Um, and I got to say, this might be the first time a lot of people hear you because in our initial recording at PodFest, poor Melissa was, I think Sarah, Viviana, and myself uh, project naturally because we're completely out of control and this is why we're friends. And I think Melissa, her mic or something, she was like at the end of the table. You couldn't hear as much. So you get to hear her this go around. So it's, it's a treat for everybody. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Viviana, you want, you want to go a second? Sure. And honestly, Melissa, when you talk, like I get so relaxed. <laughs> she should do like yes. a sleepy, like read stories or something. I completely yes. agree with that. I would totally listen to that because like you talk and I'm already like soothing. That's so funny. <laughs> I was on a podcast recently uh, called Guides Gone Wild. And the host of that told me a very similar thing. Hey, that's a compliment. <laughs> I like it. Monetize yeah. it. <laughs> yes, monetize it. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Viviana Soto and yeah, it's honestly an honor to be here. Exactly what you said about community, the fact that it's a year later that we only met for like two days or something yeah. and that we're here and we're still going strong, not only with a really nice friendship, but also with podcasting is a lot to say considering everything that has gone on for the past year. So I am the host of the Life Whispers podcast. It's a bilingual podcast, recently a lot more Spanish because <laughs> I've been in Puerto Rico for the past year and those are the stories that I have near me. And I share the incredible stories of ordinary people, people just like you and me, uh, talking about all things life, literally. So I've been doing seasons recently uh, and every season is themed differently. So I've talked about seasons of life. We've had people from every decade of life, literally nine years old to 91. That was an incredible journey, not only to like hear the stories, but also personally like taking those lessons uh, to heart. That was awesome. And now I'm in the fourth season of the podcast with the love whispers and it's hey. all about loves. 
So if you guys are feeling, I don't know, romantic or inspired or frustrated, this is the <laughs> podcast for you. So yeah, that's what I've been I've been doing for the past year. Honestly, podcast has podcasting has saved me in this year of probably not doing much. So yeah. this has kept me entertained, and I'm sure you can all relate. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I'm last but not least. I am Go girl. Sarah McInerney Hawk. I am the host of the Facing Fear podcast and brand. So my goal is to bring individuals to the show who have faced fear in their life and are in pursuit of an unapologetically authentic life and defining success on their own terms. I recently crossed 50 episodes, I think. So that's really exciting. I've done guests and solo episodes. So a lot of different things in the mix. And I've had a really up and down journey with podcasting. It's been overall really amazing though. And I'm so proud of myself looking back at where we all were a year ago. It's very cool to, to reflect on for sure. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And I think that actually jumps to like my very first question that actually wasn't on our list because, you know, I don't really do uh, plan questions. I did give them an outline, but we're, we're just going to do what we do. And oh, I'm drinking Guinness. That. So my body's probably like, <laughs> what is that? Where's the tequila? Like, we're che you're cheating. Anyways, um, I, I so when we are at PodFest, we were kicking things off. Like I said, we were newbies into the game. We, I, I had some episodes, but I took a chunk of time off and basically like just getting started. We And we knew the pandemic was right. It was coming. Our, I know a lot of people didn't even come to the event because it was happening and airports are starting to shut down. I don't think any of us knew that we were going to be in full lockdown for the next year. And then you would see this whole spawn of podcasts and celebrities jumping in and everybody's on Zoom and we had no idea. So I'm personally so grateful that I did have this outlet and I did have like this focus during that time. I've always worked from home. So honestly, my reality wasn't super, super different, but it was definitely an outlet to thrive. Um, my question for you guys that I, I really wanted that I noticed in my journey, um, you know, kind of seeing my world shift because of the pandemic, I saw that in reflection of my podcast and the conversations I was having. So I would, I would, and obviously we had a year around social justice and, um, you know, the economy and the, the uh, election, like there were so many heavy duty things happening. Um, I would love to know what was impacting in, in your world and how that impacted the art and or your podcasts that you created over the past year? I'll go first because this is, especially on your last point there, if this, this is going to sound strange or maybe a little insensitive, but if you would have told me years ago that I was going to have this platform where I publicly talked about Black Lives Matter and I interviewed Black people about their experiences, I would have been like, who is doing that? Like, that sounds really brave. That sounds really intense. But I am so thankful that I had this outlet because while I appreciate, I work at a corporation and while I appreciate what they did to stand up, to me, it wasn't enough. And so I was so thankful to have my own little Facing Fear with Sarah brand where I could really come out and truly be myself. And um, in that way, I could bring everybody else with me on this learning journey because I see learning about racial injustice. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And I've been so grateful to sit down with many different people of many different races and just ask them about what is your life like and what are we not seeing? So I'm so thankful that I had podcasting because it's such a good excuse to sit down with someone. And as long as you have a genuine interest of putting their story out there to either listen and learn or hopefully, you know, educate somebody else, including myself. That's mm -hmm. been incredible. And I'm so glad that I've had this creative outlet because I don't think I would have learned as much as I did firsthand from sitting across from somebody on a Zoom, hearing their life story otherwise. So that's how podcasting has been impactful to me. And the half to number one highlight and world changer or game changer that I did not see coming. Right. Craziness. Yeah, I think to add on a little bit of a different perspective, in my case, it was very overwhelming, everything that was going on. And I feel like it was for so many people as well. Mm -hmm. I was learning as I went. I love that Sarah took that stance because I listened to your podcast and I was educated through that you know, I wasn't, I didn't feel, and I, this is something that I've also listened to in podcasting that in like different podcasts that I've heard with this whole black lives matter and all these social movements, even if you're not educated, you shouldn't stay quiet. I took that stance for two reasons. First, I was listening. I feel like before you talk, you really have to listen and know where you stand, know what you feel and feel relatively educated to, to put a voice and an opinion out there. And I wasn't there. 
And I also wanted to create a space where people could like detach a little bit. I was overwhelmed. Everyone was overwhelmed. I wanted to learn from others, but I wanted to just put something out there that felt like, you know, I created a season that was meant for binge listening and it was binge listening through people of all ages, uh, people through all experiences. And I heard people like be like, Viviana, I've been listening to your podcast for hours nonstop because you just keep learning all these new life perspectives. Uh, so I kind of approach to all the craziness I was like you know what I want to you know take this moment to like learn to like connect with my emotions and to listen which I think was like my biggest so I I heard more podcasts than I've heard in a while and I learned a lot and Sarah again it was a very like I heard a lot of your episodes because you were very like also on social media you had this open your mic or you like opened your mic to other people to come talk. So I took advantage of those resources versus being the resource myself. <laughs> what was really interesting in my world in the last year is that um, as a hiking guide and a photographer, so much of my life is spent outside and so many other people in 2020 discovered the outdoors. So yeah. in some ways it was really great. And in other ways, it was like, hey, there's all these new people out there. The trails are crowded. The parks are crowded. You know, who? what do we do? How do we figure out how to introduce all these new people to the outdoors? And so I didn't do so many podcasts, but I did get to introduce a whole lot of other people who were new to the outdoors to some trails once things started to open up again. So in the summer, I started bringing more people outside who just happened to find me at some point along the way. And that was really great. And then around, you know, around the whole Black Lives Matter and, you know, people in the outdoors who are underrepresented, you know, people of color are certainly underrepresented in the whole outdoors industry. So it was really great to see a whole lot of uh, platforms opening themselves up and in embracing, you know, black people who hike and uh, all colors of nature and all these Instagram handles and organizations that are there to help promote underrepresented people in the outdoors. And so something I've done in terms of interviews over the last couple of months and a few episodes coming um, are try to actively find people who, you know, don't look like me uh, out there. And so it was really, I had a really great episode uh, with a woman, Patty Boom Boom Alcivar, who is, wants to be the first Latina in New York City, first New York City Latina to hike all of the seven summits, uh, the highest peak on each continent in the world. And she's got three out of seven already completed. So went on a walk with her in her native borough of Queens. Um, I've got some lovely regular hikers of mine who are uh, natives of St. Vincent in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Caribbean. And they have their own hiking group. And I got to talk to Avalu and Claydana about their group coming up. I have interviewed a woman from uh, Latino Outdoors. She's the local New York City chapter leader. And we went for a walk in Central Park on Sunday. So that is interviews coming up. So it's just, you know, I love the outdoors. A lot of people in New York City don't have access to cars. Uh, so, you know, how do we get these groups, some of these groups who definitely don't have the vehicles, they don't have that kind of access to get further in nature. What can we do right here in the city? What can we do that's a, a train ride away and really helping educate and uh, embrace all of these people who want to be outside? I love it. I, it's so interesting to see. And I think it's indicative of our cast and our personalities of our reaction and approach to the past year and into podcasting. I think that something that you, you continue to learn over life is that comparison is the thief of joy. And it's so true because there is no right way. I, love, I always love when people are like, yeah, I'm consulting and podcasting. I'm like, oh, that's good. Do you dream big? Because it's all made up right now. Like the landscape <laughs> is changing so fast and it's not that it's wrong or they're wrong. It's everything is just changing and the companies are getting in and people are monetizing it and you know equipment's getting better and uh different voices and different approaches and 
the beautiful through line is that like, it's all correct because there are, you know, people are like, oh, there's millions of podcasts. Well, there's billions of people. There's something for everyone. And you can be a turmeric and tequila human where maybe sometimes you want to listen to Sarah's cast and it's like, how do I learn? I want to, you know, get schooled on some things. Maybe I want to relax and binge on Viviana's. Maybe I want to see, you know, who's getting outdoors and what's going on and something that's more critical around hikes and it. You get, so it's, it's completely different things. Um, and it's, it's people that are like questioning a better way and doing it their way. And I, I think we've all kind of grown up in a society of like, here's how it's done. Here's status quo. And then here comes podcasting or any social media, YouTube. And it's like, eh, actually here's this and it's working. So th this is like a, an optimistic point for me, from my perspective for 2021, that it's like, you get to see everybody in their authentic space and it thriving. Like it's, I don't think it's something that we've ever seen before, not because we can monetize it or make much money, but this provides so many more outlets for our young humans to see and identify with and um, connect with, even when we're super disconnected, which hopefully that changes in 2021. Um, but I think that's great. And I didn't really introduce to and Tila, but again, if you're listening, I hope you know, we're here to question one, uh, something, a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time to inspire social change. I do have to give a shout out. As Sarah said, she dove in and was doing open mics. I did something similar and I really feel like we owe a leg up to be golden. Um, um, to Sarah and Chelsea, we have to give them some love. Even then, I will say they were ahead of the game. Uh, as white people, we were late in general, and we still are. Uh, but we were having some of these heavy conversations. So I really did appreciate having some exposure prior to everything to 2020, the way it went, just so we could get on the mic and get in. And did I learn a ton? A hundred percent. But it was really, really amazing to have some of those conversations already had some of that exposure. Um, so we could, you know, jump in. So super hats off to them on a light note since we did jump right into the deep can, let's do a quick cheers i'm drinking guinness do you guys want to share what you're drinking because i also think this is indicative of our personalities <laughs> okay i'll go first <laughs> i recently got to have a girlfriend's weekend where all we drank was tequila so i'm taking yes. a break and i got a little lime white claw here for it viviana what you got i know this is not indicative of my personality uh-oh <laughs> i just I've been so tired and I was like, no, I had a rosé. So that's my personality. Prosecco, rosé, <laughs> but I'm drinking water. So I'm boring today. Hey, except, except, I did a glass of, so it looks like either vodka straight or really Blanco tequila. Oh, so I should we'll, have made something up. Yeah. You can rebrand it. It's all good. But I appreciate your honesty. We're here for that. <laughs> I, <laughs> Melissa, what you got? Well, I hopped off the subway after work so I could run to the store and get mezcal so I could make this uh, Paloma-esque cocktail with mezcal and fresh squeezed grapefruit juice and lime juice and Kochi Amar Americano and a whole bunch of deliciousness. It's amazing. It looks Again, amazing. even... It's really um, good. Even Melissa's drink has a roadmap. It's perfect. It's uh, it's a whole situation. <laughs> Damn, nailed it. <laughs> but I love it. And then we were just commenting how her voice is so, you know, nice. And you can like take a nice nap. I think you hear mine and you like need a Tylenol. And like and a break. <laughs> but we're, that's why we cover all the bases, you know? Um, Great okay, variety. I, exactly uh before we jump down we were talking about like audio and, and so much we've learned i really want to cover um I, I love transparency and i try and highlight that on my cast as you know if you listen in the beginning the audio is terrible and hopefully it's gotten better but we're learning everything so and, and i want people to be encouraged and welcome to jump into this i'm so excited about podcasting what it is and i have zero fear of competition not because it's so great it's just because i think there's so many humans that need different perspectives like let's jump in so i i want to um highlight some of the things that we like our challenges and how we've overcome them and resources and, and anything of that nature. So um, whoever wants to go first, give me some of your biggest challenges and what was the first thing you went to do to solve those? Well, one of my biggest challenges is that I'm trying to keep the podcast for the most part very on brand with Girl Gotta Hike, the company, right? What I do is I try to uh, create, uh, con sorry, let me re rephrase that. Um, I do a lot of editing on my podcast, by the way. So I know not everybody <laughs> edits for content. And I have to remember that when I'm speaking on other people's podcasts that like, oh, I can't just edit my flubs out. Um, anyway, I, uh, I try to connect women with nature, confidence, and camaraderie. And a lot of the way that happens is while we're out on trail with a, with a small group, small group this year. Um, and so just these natural conversations flow while we're walking. So I want to emulate that in the podcast. And so about half my episodes are while I'm out actually walking with people. And so it's a really 
different way than that traditional, like you're in a room full of blankets and you're trying to reduce outside noise. I actually embrace the outside noise, you know, where we're walking in a park in Queens, New York or Central Park or another episode that I'm editing now. I was up in Maine last month and the artists that I was interviewing and I were hiking around in micro spikes on snow and ice. So you hear this like crunch, 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 crunch as we're walking. And I was really nervous that like, that was all the mics were going to pick up. But when I cut myself out of her mic and I cut her out of my mic while I'm editing, it's like, okay, it's reduced enough where it's just to the background. But that's really the biggest challenge for me is like, how do I keep the outdoor sounds without spending 24 hours editing per podcast because <laughs> it's about what it takes me. Um, and then the episodes where I'm not doing that, um, I generally have two or three people, uh, myself and two other people. And then it's just like, how do I keep them from being four hours long <laughs> because we're having a good time chatting? So I, I would I think- like to jump in and say when I met Melissa and she told me about her podcast and she said that she walks and talks, I immediately like drew back and I was like oh that can't be good <laughs> but holy shit it sounds amazing it is so cool I truly don't know what you do and I'm sure you're gonna hate to hear it but every hour that you spend editing is so worth it it you can hear both Melissa and her guests perfectly clear and then you can hear nature around it is so 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 cool so you have to listen to her her podcast I I at first was like this this bitch is crazy but <laughs> it is amazing it is so so I've never heard anything like it nothing like it it's amazing thank you thank you it does take hours so I really I needed that pop talk actually <laughs> I think that's huge. I think a really big through line of what you just said or a takeaway is maybe instead of like going against something that doesn't, you know, it's, it's not supposed to work. It's not good. It's embracing what's there, like embracing the sound, embracing the outdoors. I know you do a lot of editing, but embracing some of the, of what's there and, and maybe view it as a positive. I completely agree with what Sarah just said. I do. And you know, I don't edit shit because I'll get an extension <laughs> of personality, but um, it, for your show and what it is, I think that is the beauty of it. And I can see why there are less episodes and why it's harder, but that's okay. You know, you, you have yeah. less of them in, in there. Thank you. <laughs> Viviana, how about you? Give me some challenges. Some challenges. I feel like I have a lot. I tried to like put some together. <laughs> um, honestly, I'm figuring out what rhythm works for me without overthinking what works for my audience. I think it's um, it's addictive to try to do something that people enjoy and that people are constantly giving you feedback and it, you see growth in your listens because I've had a, a lot of good conversations recently about the obsession with how many downloads you have and how many likes you have even if you genuinely do this for the love of it which is what I do it's hard not to fall into those you know how do I get more people to listen how do I spread the word and that has been honestly one of my biggest challenges uh, keeping the consistency going with what's aligned with me, not too many episodes, not too little episodes. I did that binge listen, which was awesome for the people that listened, but it was also terrible for me. <laughs> I edited, I had to do like, well, I did like 25 uh, episodes, which I ended up only publishing 18 at the same time, which meant I had to overspend because Buzzsprout only lets you this certain oh, amount of yep, hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I didn't think of that. And, and, I, and it was because someone gave me the idea and I was like, sure, that would be fun. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, you know, and then I was, I wasn't going to publish a new episode because I had 18 that I just launched, but I learned that people need something new all the time. So there were like episodes that if I would have launched them like more periodically, they would have gotten more attention, which it wasn't about the downloads, but about the meaning behind the interviews. So this has been kind of like a, a constant theme for me, like trying to figure out what rhythm works and what I feel comfortable with. How can I keep something consistent, making sure that what I'm doing comes from the heart and not because I feel like I have to do a biweekly release or I have to do this because no one's going to see my Insta stories because after a while, if you don't post, you disappear. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's been a lot of like the, the internal part, how to keep something that really works for you, that really is aligned with the true reason why you're doing podcasting. Uh, I think that has been 
kind of my biggest challenge more than the technical uh, more than the editing more than the creating artwork and finding people to interview it's been how do I handle the podcasting what people want with what I want myself yeah. for the podcast I think that's great. And what a metaphor for life, like pick out what you want to do, do it for you. And I think that, that awareness of that balance is constant. Cause I'm like you, I'd, I'm like, it's not about the downloads. And I, again, in management and a branding and all that, you try not to get wrapped up in the numbers. Usually when you work with a big client, they want to know what's your, I give me the analytics, blah, 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 blah. Some things aren't measurable and like, that's fine. So it is that constant balance, but you do get sucked in. And I think even staying connected to my podcast, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. They're doing this. Or Melissa's emails are so good. Or Viviana's got great artwork. And Sarah's out here and she, the branding looks good. But So it's, I, I think it's inspirational. And then you have to just have that awareness of like, yes, that's their authentic way. That doesn't mean your way is right or wrong. It's just that's how they're doing it. Take inspiration from it. But also you don't have to do that. Like, so it is, it, it is, it's really hard. And the numbers thing is always <laughs> so hard. It's hard. Um, Sarah, so hit us with your challenges. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if I could, I'm a pretty visual person. If I could describe me in this podcast journey, you would have to picture somebody walking on a tight rope that then sometimes turns into a balance beam and then sometimes turns into a huge platform. So I say that in being like, I was real sketchy, kind of like I could fall left or right. And for me, left or right was psych myself up or psych myself out. And I did a lot of psyching myself up because at the beginning it was so fun. It was great. It was going well. I think back to PodFest 2020 and Kristen encouraged me to get buy my own merch, which I did. And it was this like pink shirt with this weird font, but I did it anyways. <laughs> I loved and, it. But it was such a psych up moment. And then through 2020, I realized I really love this. I think this is a part of my God-given talent. Like I should turn this into my full job, full-time job. But, and then that was a whole dark, dark side of like psych myself out. So sometimes I felt like I was on a tightrope between these two things, but lately I felt more on this like balance beam slash platform. So my challenges have been, do you psych yourself up or psych yourself out? And it's way easier. We all as humans fall towards the psych yourself out. Um, do I have enough listens? Why don't I have a sponsor yet? Um, a million different things. I actually recently wrote an article for my college talking about um, my tips for podcasting. And I said, my number yes. one tip and number one thing, to, which was so great to write and reflect, I said, perfect is the enemy of good enough. That is what I would tell anybody who wants to start a podcast. And on the psych myself up, that's an intentional journey that you have to pay attention to. So I, I'm like sitting at my desk. So for all of you who are listening, I pulled out this list that I'm showing them and it has a bunch of check boxes on it. And at the top I wrote, if I was in school and a professor would have asked me to check off all these boxes in a year, I would have said, fuck that. But I did all this shit in a year yes. and I, you know, like looking back, nice. like I would have said this assignment is freaking ridiculous. You're out of your damn mind. So you just have to like reflect appropriately. And I did that when I hit my year, cause I hit my year in November, 2020. And it was just a part of psyching myself up and I'm my first biggest critic. So I would say my challenges have been balancing between the psych myself out and psych myself up. Absolutely. I love the exercise. I feel like I want to do it too because it's all perspective. Yes, I yeah. literally wrote like check boxes and was like, if this was a professor assignment, I would have been like, you're out of your GD mind. Yeah. But I did. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think people know how much podcasting, how much work really goes into it. And I heard this before I started, but I was like, whatever. And, um, when I, when I choose something, regardless if they're like, don't do it, I, I, I usually do it. And that's a whole other podcast, but, um, I don't think people understand how much time, energy, photo, social media, getting into it. And then, and then I think when we get into it, it does become routine. So we don't recognize all the work that's going in. So what you said, Sarah, is so deeply valid and so deeply important for ourselves as hosts to go back. And again, this can be applicable to anybody in life. If you're a coach, a mom, whatever, whatever you're doing professional to be like, Ooh, time out. Let's really see what we've done this past week month year and let it let's see what boxes have been checked and take a time out pour yourself a glass of 
tequila, get a gold star, whatever, because chances are you are doing a lot. And here's the beauty for this. None of us are making money off this yet. Like it's so deeply pure. I hope that changes for everybody, myself included, if that's the intention. Um, and I have whole heart belief that it will be, but right now it's so beautiful that it is just straight up blood, sweat and tears and passion. And this is such a beautiful phase. I think when we, I hope to do this annually, I think when we connect down the years, um, this will be a really beautiful time to reflect on and be like, remember when we were young, hashtag Botox, and we were just in it just because, <laughs> and we weren't arguing over like Spotify versus, you know ebay or this or that, whatever like it's just we're just fools sipping tequila in a hallway eating pizza and wasn't that wonderful so um i think that's i think that's really valid and, I, and of course sarah you had a list and it was written down and reflected upon i'm here for all of these things <laughs> um i i want to hear uh, we went to the challenges. Give me something that's like you didn't expect from the podcast community that not only like supplemented your podcast, but supplemented your life or you as a human being. Uh, because it, podcasting for me, the community around it, it reminded me so much of lacrosse and CrossFit into my fitness journey, which have been huge supplementations uh, in my life overall. I have, I just cherish the community and the humans that it's brought into my world. It's so amazing. Um, if it never makes a dollar, if I get zero listens or whatever, it, it, truthfully, I could walk away and say, this has been such a, an amazing compliment to my world thus far that I had no idea was coming. So give me something that's really good that you're like, holy shit, I had no idea this was going to happen. It was because of my podcast or podcasting. I think for me, really, really like podcasting gave me purpose in a lot of months where you were so disconnected from it. For such a long time, I've been a traveler. I'm oh, I'm a very social being. So I'm always looking for ways to like, you know, disconnect, connecting with other people or external, it, it like external sources. You know, I want to travel. I want to go to events. I want to go out. I want to drink. I want to eat. And then you're locked in and you lose all purpose because everything that was tied to who you are as a person, as a person and your personality is completely taken away. And podcast was like my way to meet people. I can't tell you the amount of virtual friends that I have right now. Like I have friends that I'm like, wow, like as soon as this is over, I'm going to have dinner with all of you guys. And it's going to feel like we were there for each other in the hardest times, like people that like my things. And then they commented or they sent me a DM and they were like, wow, you have no idea how much I needed to hear that. And then we start talking about how this episode where I'm connecting, they connected. And then she tells me her life issues. And then I tell her mine. And out of nowhere, we're like, we've never seen each other. I have no idea who you are, uh, but now I have a connection with you that might be tighter than people that I actually know. So it's, I think it's for me, it wasn't just a, the community of podcasters, which is obviously fabulous. And what I love is that there is no competition because how can I compete with you guys? You're all doing something so different. And like, yeah. you're, you know, I know what you guys feel when you do this. And when you connect with a the feeling, there's no way to be like, I want you to not succeed next to me because the feeling is so nice. You want everyone to feel it. Mm -hmm. And, but it was also connecting to humans out there everywhere who are like, I've sent handwritten letters to people that I don't know that I've <laughs> never seen their faces. And I think it was thanks to podcasting and the ability that we have to do this, right? It's virtual and, and people are more vulnerable than ever. So in an, in a very hard time, everyone's opening up and allowing themselves to meet new people that perhaps physically it would have never happened. That's one of my greatest highlights and successes has been the people that I've been able to, to meet. Well said, well said. I have been a competitor my whole life, mostly in athletics, also being one of four siblings. So there was competition for academics and then in school and having the ambitions of wanting to go to college. And when you're a competitor like that, it's how can I get to the front of the line the quickest and how fast do I need to run? How much do I need to train? And it's, it's on me to get there. And I spent a lot of time this year um, doing Instagram takeover switches with people where you, you drop off of your own platform and you let somebody come out, somebody else come on your platform and promote themselves. And again, I never would have thought that I would be doing some of that because I'd be like, oh, well, they're going to take my listeners and they're going to go somewhere else and they're going to never going to love me. But when you're so welcomed 
and loved and you feel like you're in the right place, you're not afraid of any competition, which kind of comes back to the point KO made early on that so many celebrities have jumped into the podcasting game. They do not scare me at all, <laughs> mostly because they pod fade, which means they have stopped um, <laughs> within six months, but also because when, just like what Viviana was saying, when you feel called to be in a space, you feel welcome and you feel you will make those connections. And man, I think my lucky stars for meeting you guys last year. <laughs> like I met Melissa after we both approached the buffet table and went straight for the burgers and barely <laughs> said anything because our mouths were full. And then I met Viviana because we just put our table, our stuff on the same table. And I've truly never felt like these are my people than when I was at PodFest. And I just went through the virtual conference last week and it was really great. But um, I look forward to being in person again. But I really feel like I found my people in this community. And something really cool that happened to me through this community, which was the original question that KO asked, was at the beginning of the year, I was feeling just really not into it, didn't really want to do it, didn't know why I didn't want to start my show back up. And then I got an email from someone that said, hey, I found your show. I've had, um, I've stuttered my entire life and I would love to come on and tell my story. And I had zero plans for starting the show back up. And then getting that email, I was like, oh shit, I have to interview this guy. I have to have him on. Like we gotta, we gotta start the car here. So those were some really awesome moments of feeling like I found a community of other podcasters, but then also having people reach out to you like that out of the blue, you're like, wow, now I have this really cool responsibility. Yeah. That's really, that's really awesome. Um, I, you mentioned, uh, Sarah, the uh, Instagram takeover, which is the first time I've ever done that was with the three of you. And only time I've ever done that is with the three of you. <laughs> that was so fun. That was so much fun. And I got responses from friends of mine who were like, oh my God, it must be so great to have this community. Like if I had all the hours in the world, if I didn't have a kid, I would listen to all of their podcasts. And I think that that is the, that's something that I've heard uh, from a few people who were following me, but maybe have to take care of like kiddos at home now is like, I have no time to listen to podcasts anymore because my kid's in the way. Um, but uh, in terms of other community, um, just sort of getting introduced and learning some of the other outdoor podcasts, it's just been really nice to be a guest uh, on a couple of other podcasts uh, that involve the outdoors, that involve the Appalachian Trail. One of them being uh, a guy, Steve Adams, who was at PodFest last year. And he has uh, somebody there was like, oh, you're an outdoor podcaster. This guy's an outdoor podcaster. You should meet. And we actually did meet for lunch. Uh, I just had coffee, but we we just met. Uh, I don't know if it was the last day of the podfest or, or the day before. And I ended up being a guest on his show, uh, which is called Mighty Blue on the AT. Uh, that was his trail name when he threw hiked the Appalachian trail and he interviews other through hikers. So just like kind of this unique world of outdoor podcasters. And, uh, you know, there's so many, so many people to meet still. It's exciting. That's awesome. Um, did you have, coffee I love how day? you can have like your, <laughs> sorry, Go Wait, ahead. what'd you say? <laughs> that I love how you can have like your niche and there's still people like I would have like I don't hike I wish and I've told you that you're invited to Puerto Rico and I already sent you like oh yeah when she did the takeover I googled like <laughs> what are the, tra the hiking trails in Puerto Rico I've been to El Yunque once and I've been to Vieques and I swam in the bioluminescent bay but I will go back I love 100 percent and take us and then yes. you do that so like it's such a specific thing but then you hear of all these other people that do that like you I always find that fascinating <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's phenomenal business advice some of like the, I really tried to keep an eye on what is going on the business side who's investing what is you know Apple switching now it's from subscribe to follow and all the little minutia of what's going in because I really do love the business side and I also side eye a lot of it because I'm like mm, do you really know? And then things are changing, but it's fine. Um, so, and there's amazing stuff happening, but once you see like the big dollars come in, you know, something's happening They're They have very advanced in their forecasting, their analytics, what have you. So 
as much as I said, I do know they know some things. Um, but I think it's really cool when it's like people that own a cat that like to knit that live in Brooklyn that would, and it's so niche, but those have been some really deeply successful, meaning usually downloads, um, but likely impactful and inviting and a connection point that otherwise, even if we were in COVID, I, that's hard to find someone that does this in Puerto Rico that loves Rose, that loves pink, that like, I mean, these are really hard things to, these are like, this is more advanced than a dating app. So there's a major, beautiful uh, connection through podcasting where you can find these deeply niche specific situations and then find people that you're exactly alike in the most random things. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, Maybe you, I guys, think when you, you need to do a guided trail in Puerto Rico with Melissa. I think that should be the goal. That is the goal for sure. <laughs> Agreed. No, I think it's honestly, I think it's, it's wonderful. Like I, you, it's a good quality to be unique, but it's also a lonely quality if you're not seeing it through the best eyes and with the best perspective. And if anything, hearing these trends makes you feel like, wow, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in loving pink and loving rosé and drinking and hiking in Vieques. Come on, okay? you, you start <laughs> realizing that. You know, whenever you do feel alone, you have to remember, like, there are communities like crazy of people that love just what you do. You just have to, like, put a little bit of effort. And I think with the digital world, you you can find anything that you're looking for. 100%. All right, we got about 10 minutes. Um, I really want to hear uh, what's coming up in 2021 for each of you. And how is it going to be different from 2020 or anything that you're excited about uh, that you're bringing to the podcast or to your life? Who wants to go first? Sarah, you I think you're go. thinking. I'll go, Sarah. <laughs> I'll, think, <clears throat> I'll think out loud. Um, I, like I said, had a, <clears throat> cut that out. I had a <laughs> up and down journey with podcasting and I have recently, I did this awesome exercise. It's from the Good Life podcast. The man who hosts that, his name is Jonathan Fields. He has this workbook and this whole theory called the Sparkotype. So you go through, you take this assessment and it spits out to, you know, personality traits at you. And so I found that in January when I was going through this period of my life, like, do I want to stay in my job full time? Should I try to turn this podcasting into something else? Do I want to be a fitness instructor full time? Like, what do I, what am I doing? What am I doing? And that's the question he wants to answer. So I take this whole assessment and then at the end, so you get your two personality traits and at the end he says, stop, don't get a divorce. Don't sell your house. Don't quit your job. Don't burn your car like just wait. And he says, there is this thing that exists where you can be sparked on the side. It's where you have this, um, this income generating optimized thing in your life. But then you also, because of that, you have this freedom to create and be creative and flexible and flowy. And that's what I want to do more of with the podcast. And speaking of perfect is the enemy of good enough. I remember at the beginning of my journey being like, this episode has to go up tomorrow or everyone will unsubscribe from the show because it wasn't up at Monday at 5 a.m. Like no one cares. Like Kristen said, I don't have any sponsors. I have no one to report to. And that's awesome. That's so beautiful. So I want to go into this year with more freedom. I already have. I straight up didn't do an episode last week. Whoops, sorry, don't care. Um, but I will always bring on amazing, great guests. They will always be high quality episodes. But I was so structured in my first year because it was 2020 and I had more time that real life is happening and I don't have as much time as I did and I don't have the money to pay somebody else to manage this whole thing. I'm just gonna be a little bit more free flowing and relax and enjoy the journey because when I was having the most fun with my podcast was when I was just following my gut intuition. And guess what? Those episodes also have the highest downloads and the highest mm -hmm. listens and the most emotional response. So in 2021, I hope to do more of that. And the other goal I have is to talk more about my fears and to get a little bit more personal because I love hearing podcast hosts talk on a solo episode or really take us behind the scenes. So those are two of my goals to just be a little bit more free and flowy and then also be more um, authentic and open and honest with my fears too. Boom. I love all that. 
Viviana, I do. I feel like I feel like after we're done, you give us a little recap of your answers. Now I'm curious to hear about them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, my you answers. Yeah. 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 Well, so my authentic self is like, whatever's man, it's all gonna work out, la la. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten more into the like strategic, which I mean, this is my version of strategic, which I am intentional of. You know me as a competitor. There's certain things in my life that fall in line and then there's other things turmeric and teal that are like nah, whatever and it works out and we're good or it doesn't it, it's we're just figuring it out as we go um but my mission this year and I've, I've actually been deeply intentional for about the past three or four months getting up every morning like having the structured but really setting my mindset around goals affirmations faith um believing and just getting back to my deep deep authentic like my high school self and I'm like I'm going d1 for lacrosse I'm doing this and there was no reason why I should have believed any of that but I just did and that's one of my strengths and it's certainly I talk about this a lot on the podcast it's run me through the wall multiple times and we have to learn things the hard way but that's fine um <laughs> but getting back to that uh, just believe it's going to work out however it shakes out it's going to work out I'm so deeply clear that this is my most impactful way to be useful to this world podcasting is it this is it like I'm so clear on that how that actually how I get from A to B I have no fucking clue but I know that small things even when I'm like I don't know what's going on like you somebody reaches out you hear a story someone's like I can't believe this and I'm like holy shit you're listening of like all the people I thought might be listening I didn't think it was you and so you I think for anyone that's listening the podcasting work family if it's in you and you feel it just let go of the plan and just stick to it if you know that it's there and keep the faith do your daily stuff but uh lean in and so that's that's my quick for one intentional get my mind right and then just believe and be open for opportunity love it melissa how about you i'm here oh, like man <laughs> all right well something sarah's said um about uh making your art your business reminds me of elizabeth gilbert's book uh big magic very impactful read I so read this impactful and viviana i just heard you quoting that in an episode i caught up with all your latest episodes today actually oh, while i was while i was photographing <laughs> in manhattan uh i was listening to you guys uh, but uh yeah just that that really helped me a few years ago of um starting girl got a hike because I'm a freelance photographer primarily that is subsidizing whatever I do with girl got a hike girl got a hike is starting to make money but I'm still investing in it I'm still buying a ton of equipment I'm starting to do you know all sorts of things so so having that day job you know is really what's allowing me to do all of this other stuff like yeah. you know buy microphones, go on trips, you know, take people out hiking. And so that keeping that idea of like a day job is fine. As long as you are, you know, if you're not until you get to the point where you can really, really not have to worry about your art paying the bills. Like if it just explodes, like for Elizabeth Gilbert, like eat, pray, love exploded. She didn't have to like write for magazines anymore. So for me, it was like, oh, I can do this photography work that like, isn't my passion, but it's something I'm really good at. And then when I let that go, other photography work just as like happened that I've done for fun is like, uh, you know, oh, hey, uh, we know you have images uh, of this hunting guide in Maine. Can we use them in our magazine? You know, those things are like starting to come. And that was the stuff I did for fun instead of like relying on, oh my God, I have to be this outdoor photographer, which is what I'd love to be and not have to do so much of the, like the day-to-day -day other work, but the day-to-day -day other work is allowing me to do all this podcasting stuff. So just continuously remembering that, um, when I'm trying like working seven days a week between the both of them is, is just like what I need to keep remembering in 2021. And I think for me, the goal as it always is in all of my freelance career is just to try to get a little more regularity and structure out of my days and put my, my passions first, even if that means getting up really early in the morning and doing like an hour of work, you know, okay, this podcast is going to take me 20 hours to edit instead of that being this, I need three days straight to do it, go like, okay, an hour a day. I'm only putting them out once every month or so anyway. So at least it's less stressful that way. And I think just continuously reminding myself to, to work in that way is kind of what I'm going to do for 2021. I think my head is going to roll off my shoulders because I have been nodding so hard at everything she just <laughs> said, because 
I've gone through those exact same things. And Big Magic was a mental game changer for me. Highly recommend Big Magic, Elizabeth Gilbert. No offense, but it's 10 times better than Eat, Pray, Love. (laughs) So everyone who has a creative outlet, a side hustle, you have to read Big Magic. I agree. I loved it so much. And I agree with everything you ladies have said. I think finding the balance between like strategy and structure and fl- and free flow is is honestly the goal. Balance is the goal now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, turmeric and tequila, exactly. <laughs> you know it. Yeah, I think that's where I'm at too. I, I realized in 2020, we, we tried it all. And I feel like there were times that I was like super passionate and doing like a lot of things. And then I was super exhausted. And then I took a really long break. And then I was like, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> and it was like this wheel of too much or too little. So I realized that, you know, I'm an anxious person and not having things organized stresses me out. So just like Melissa, it's like one hour a day or like take these days and work on these things versus doing it whenever I want or doing it like like military you know just be like you know what um I'll take three days in a week and I'll do everything I have to do in those three days for two hours and I set my mind for those hours um, and that gives me peace because I know I'm doing things when I'm supposed to do them on my terms uh, and I don't have to be like pressured or anything so I think for 2021 I'm a creative person just like all of you are and I feel like okay I've done the wine Wednesdays I've done the episodes I've done the IG lives I've done now what and it's like I think this year I'm gonna get in my rhythm and take it slow I think we've all had enough change we've already done a lot and just like pot fading I feel like you do all like I know many of you like like you all have different channels with what you do right and I think we came up with all these ideas and now it's time to be like okay these are the four things I want to focus on and for one year I'm just going to focus on those four things doing them nice doing them right doing them consistently and then maybe 2022 I'll get more creative but for now I'm sticking to love whispers I'm obsessed with this season it's all about love so I just interviewed I've gotten out of my comfort zone so bad and so I really recommend you guys to listen to those episodes where I got I turned red or I was like Whoa. are you in love are you in love right now is this coming through you like are you channeling it I'm not I actually maybe it's a- coming maybe it's coming or I had a little heartbreak recently. Okay. So, hey, a door closes, a better one opens. So look alive. <laughs> I, I like your idea better of maybe I'm like putting this energy yeah. in the universe. Oh, for sure. The, the right. vibration's real. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. so. I feel it too. I feel it too. So this year Amazing. I'm excited with this season. I don't know how long it'll last because I keep getting ideas and I keep getting stories and I, I did like a survey and I keep getting people that fill out the survey. So I'll be in love all year. <laughs> I love it. That's well, well, that leaves us a good point to check in on. I think three major through lines of all of the, how it sums it up is one, keep it fun. No matter what you, you have to keep fun. And if, if you listen back to your episodes, you can tell when you're doing it because you're supposed to and when you're doing it versus you want to uh again apply, applicable to all things in life the second thing is uh, grace like just give yourself some grace for things around perfection around your process around what you're doing the schedule maybe being too um unstructured like just grace in all of it and i think the third one is authenticity like being you even if it doesn't make sense to anyone else just do it there is somebody uh that knits that loves cats in brooklyn that draws maps or whatever that's just <laughs> like you so um that's a huge thing but uh let's definitely wrap up i know it's st patrick's day we got many things going on let me know let us all know where can we find you guys hit us with the website instagram etc i am uh on Instagram at girl got a hike website, girl got a hike.com. I've got a Facebook at girl got a hike, but I'm rarely there. And uh, if you want to send me a direct message, you got some hiking questions, Melissa at girl got a hike.com. I'm <clears throat> God, I'm drinking too much. So I keep, keep having to clear my throat. Um, I never drink carbonated anything. So we're just lucky I didn't burp during this whole thing. I mean, um, it doesn't get edited. So whatever it is, it's the brand. I know. I wish I would have now, but I like burped through my nose at one point. <laughs> well, you're but, already being um, more transparent. So you're accomplishing your goal thus far. Yeah. Exactly. This is me, Sarah. You can find my world of Facing Fear with Sarah on the podcast, any app that you love to use. I'm there. 
on social media, Facing Fear with Sarah, facingfearwithsarah.com. I have some awesome merchandise that you should check out. And you can hit me up directly at hello at facingfearwithsarah.com. Yay, and I am Viviana Soto. I have thelifewhispers.com. That is my website. I couldn't find the domain lifewhispers.com. So thelifewhispers.com and my Instagram is life.whispers. And also hit me up with if you have a love story now that I'm in this <laughs> love train. Um, but definitely reach out. Any questions, want to be on the podcast? I'm, I love meeting new people as you already heard so yeah welcome to the life whispers world i hope you guys can tune in soon boom i love it we've got to give a shout out to the Podfest fam chris and everybody that made it happen this year they're gonna have an in-person event coming up they just postponed the date but uh stay tuned to Podfest, Podfest global they're doing they just broke a couple world records so we got to give some love thank you ladies for joining me again you know how to find turmeric and tequila um but let's connect please keep me posted on all things and perhaps we do another takeover or just be you know as supportive as we have been all this past year but it's so wonderful to connect i cannot believe it's been a year and as always, please let me know if anything is helpful and or supportive from my end. Turmeric and Tequila is here. Thank you for this. This was so Yes, nice. thank you. So fun. <laughs> we'll see you all soon. Good to see ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.